There's no doubt that technology has a lot to offer in every field of life uh, these days. Uh, in dealing with people living in poverty, there are lots of very interesting initiatives that are underway. Uh, for example, in Los Angeles, San Francisco, they're developing their homeless management uh, techniques, data collection and so on, so that they can track people much more carefully. They have a full array of data on almost any individual who comes within the purview of the system. That's great, and it's particularly good if there are really homes at the end of the rainbow, which so far there are not. But it also means that each individual is totally um, vulnerable to the exploitation of that data by someone who's not going to use it in their best interests because they've had to answer a questionnaire. Who have you slept with recently? What sort of drugs are you on? Um, all sorts of very intimate activities. Uh, and so that's quite a problematic part of it. The other thing with big data, of course, is that we become very dependent on algorithms. And this is interesting in the bail context. One of the big problems in the criminal justice system in a number of places, but certainly in California, is the extent to which bail has blossomed and has become an industry. So judges are now routinely setting large bail amounts for someone who's been uh, arrested and charged. That's fine for someone like me. I can mobilize quite a lot of money and I can be out on the street tomorrow. If you're homeless, and you have a $5,000 bail, there's no way at all that you can pay it yourself. So what's happening today is that I go to a commercial bail bond company. That company says, okay, if you pay me 10% upfront, I will then post the $5,000. That means I've got to find 500, and it also means I lose that 500 instantly. So if the charges are withdrawn tomorrow or ultimately dismissed, I simply lose that 500. That cycle goes again. A lot of people cannot find the 500, let alone the 5,000 or whatever, so they're languishing in prison. Everyone acknowledges that that system is unsustainable and totally unjust. What we're now looking at are applying sort of automatic evaluations of whether people are really a risk in terms of flight from appearing in court. And the way of doing that is through algorithms. But the problem is that the algorithms are sort of dependent on the data that we have. And so if you, whoever you are, are in court and they say, ah, I see your zip code is 12345, that's a well-known criminal zip code. Uh, I see that you are African-American. Hmm not a very good record in terms of showing up. Uh, I see a number of other characteristics. And so the algorithm, which is supposed to be really scientific and targeted, ends up just reproducing a lot of the prejudices and stereotypes that are currently driving the existing system. So we need to be extremely cautious with the ways in which new technologies are employed.